welcome back to an Invisible and Invisible Illness Awareness Project. Last week I talked about being on a low histamine diet. This week I wanted to talk about the EOE diet. Like I said in the elimination diet video, EOE triggers are not like foods that have eosinophils in them. They're just foods that eosinophils don't really like. And the reason behind that is that eosinophils are a type of white blood cell and white blood cells are basically your immune system and when your immune system is attacking something that it perceives as a threat part of that attack results in excess inflammation you might even notice like if you have a headache and you touch your forehead you can feel where it's slightly swollen if you have pain or at least in my case, if I touch where that pain is, I can feel some very light swelling. And it's not obvious, but if you really pay attention to your body, you will notice that kind of stuff. If you live with these kind of illnesses and have to deal with being so excessively sensitive to everything, then you start to really pay attention. Fortunately, since there's nothing I can really do to stop my immune system from being overactive, the best chance I have of having some semblance of a normal life is to kind of live within the parameters it allows me. It's kind of like being occupied by enemy forces and you don't wanna step across that line and set them off, so you just kinda keep your head down and stay in line. And in this case, the act of resistance that can set off your eosinophils is going and eating the top EOE triggers like wheat, dairy, eggs, legumes. So in my case, I kind of mentioned this in the general elimination diet video. I actually gone off wheat for a while, a few years before I was even aware of an EOE elimination diet. At the time I felt a lot better because I, I was really self-conscious about getting in shape and I always had this sort of bulge in my stomach area. And when I went off grains entirely, my stomach was a lot flatter and I just felt a lot nicer. Like when I went back to eating grains, you could just feel this weight and I, just, I felt a lot heavier and I didn't like it, but at the time I didn't really have a reason to stick with it. So first started back eating like rice and spelt, which contains gluten, but just less of it. And then eventually I started eating wheat again. At that point I could not go back to uh, drinking milk because my esophagus was damaged and I was act reacting to milk and uh, beer, which is of course made from wheat, as well as wine. So I pretty much stayed off the dairy from the time that I cut out greens up until a couple years later when I really eliminated everything. And at this point I can still definitely tell that, like for example, a couple weeks ago I bought some shredded cheese and as soon as I got home I had the bag and I was just like pouring it in my mouth, walking around the house like it was a snack and it was great, I loved it. And ever since then, every time I try to eat a little bit of it, I can start feeling that irritation. And then I have to worry about like reflux and choking and all that kind of stuff. So in that sense, you can definitely tell it's an intolerance and not a true allergy. With wheat, it's kind of similar. Um, and also, like I was saying with wine in the last video, uh, with histamine, um, there are times when I can get away with eating something like a croissant once and I might notice some difficulty swallowing the next day. Maybe I won't and I'll try to push it and have a second croissant the next day and then I'll really notice it. And then there's other times where I might go out to a restaurant thinking I'm not gonna eat and they've got this delicious homemade bread on the table smells amazing I decide to indulge and I am miserable before we even leave the restaurant so it does kind of depend similar to the whole histamine bucket theory I think it just kind of uh, comes down to 
where you are overall. Some people with EOE have noticed that their tolerance is higher when they're someplace where the environmental allergies are lower. So if you go someplace where something in the air is already causing you problems, then you're gonna be able to tolerate less foods. So in that case, or the case where you've already eaten something that you don't really tolerate, obviously you're not gonna be able to tolerate as much or any when you cheat. Uh, eggs are another one I mentioned in the histamine video too because uh, histamine does play into eggs as well. But I noticed that with eggs, uh, when, when, I, when I eliminated eggs the first time I challenged them, they made it was like I had taken Benadryl and I was so drowsy just 15 minutes later. Um, eggs are not something that I really miss, but there have been times every now and then where I've wanted to have some. And just a few months ago, I gave it a try. I noticed I did just fine with them. So a couple weeks later, I had some more and I had them maybe every single day and it was fine. And then I went someplace else where I am now. And now if I eat eggs here, I'm completely knocked out for the entire day. And I can say that that definitely has something to do with the environment because overall I've definitely had a lot less energy since I've been here and I'm filming this at night because again I'm really struggling with my energy and the only small window where I do have the energy to film is in the middle of the night um, and that has a lot to do with the environment so that's definitely something to consider if you live with EOE histamine intolerance, MCAS, any of these. As far as legumes, that was kind of a no-brainer because I actually am allergic to those for the most part, which means that I cannot eat them at all. Even smelling uh, peanuts and cashews will... I, I will physically start reacting if it's near me and if it touches. There are other types of nuts where I won't react to the smell and those are, I think, are the nuts that are not so oily so they can be around me and it doesn't really bother me but I can't actually eat them. I've always reacted with a sore throat to peas, beans, soy. I think one time I accidentally ate lentils, it was bad. Um, and with hazelnuts, that might actually be an intolerance because I noticed years ago I was eating this chocolate bar that had hazelnuts in it and I was eating it almost every day for six weeks and then I noticed that my asthma had been getting worse. Um, but again, your level of sensitivity can vary over time and where I was able to eat that same chocolate bar for six weeks years ago, several years later when my health was a lot worse, I tried to take one bite out of a chocolate bar that had hazelnuts and I had a very intense reaction that felt like I had accidentally eaten something with peanuts in it. So I definitely wanted to stay away from that, but then in the videos where you can see I'm in the hospital trialing different foods, um, they actually gave me hazelnuts to eat and I ate a handful of hazelnuts while I was in this hospital and I didn't have any sort of a severe reaction that they could document while I was there, which is kind of unfortunate because I wanted proof and they can help desensitize you to allergens but not intolerances, but anyways. Um, and the other one is seafood. Well, um, well, personally I do like salmon and sometimes trout and I don't have an issue with those at all. I would even enjoy lobster and shrimp if they were fresh and accessible, but um, with shrimp I would be more concerned with histamine than any other type of reaction, but for fish in general it's not an issue for me, so as always you do have to challenge these foods after you've eliminated them to make sure if they really are an issue for you. But that's basically where I stand with the EOE triggers. The list does go on beyond those top five if you, um, if eliminating those are not enough for you. Um, there's people that have to eliminate all corn products and, you know, on and on. Sometimes 
you can't just follow the list in chronological order. You just have to kind of try everything and see what works for you. Unfortunately, there are people who don't tolerate anything at all and they just have to live off of elemental formulas, uh, which is this hypoallergenic, partially digested amino acid powder that you mix up and kind of eat, drink, yeah, which is definitely not pleasant, like no flavor, but there have been times where I was at such a low point that I wished I could survive without food and just, you know, get an, an IV infusion or something so that I wouldn't have to deal with eating because then I'm sure I would have a lot more energy. But uh, now I'm fortunately slightly better to where I can enjoy a, a slightly wider range of foods and I definitely and enjoy eating again and it's of course nice to actually taste your food and eat for pleasure but um it's it's a very dark place when you eat the exact same thing every single day and you have no joy from eating um <sighs> yeah but on that note <laughs> that's all i have to say about eoe elimination diets let me know about your experience, if you have eliminated these foods for EOE or any other aegids. Um, how did it go for you? Did you stick with it in the long term? Did it help? Did it not help? Um, are you considering trying it and have any questions? Let us know in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed and you like the channel, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, we've got some chronic illness awareness t-shirts in the Teespring shop. Uh, check those out and grab yourself one. If you'd like to help support this channel, you can become a patron on Patreon and pledge as little as a dollar a month. If you'd like to support me directly, you can donate to my GoFundMe. Believe me, I really would appreciate it. And if you'd like to help contribute to subtitles, especially translations into other languages, to make these videos more accessible to people who are hard of hearing, deaf, or just don't speak English as their first language, I would really appreciate that too. You can find all of the links in the description, and I will see you guys next week.